there is a Jewish phenomenon taking place right now. And I, I imagine that you've probably witnessed it in some way. There are, there seems to be, there is a preoccupation with Judaism right now um, amongst Christians, amongst so-called Christians, professing Christians. Um, people who think that they're going to get blessed by being more Jewish or trying to be Jewish or whatever. Supporting Israel, the nation of Israel. Uh, so, it's not true. <laughs> You're not going to be blessed by trying to be more Jewish. Um, by copying Judaism, by trying to follow Judaism. Um, if you're a Christian. So, uh, I have two thoughts on the Jewish phenomenon. One is that spiritually poor people gravitate towards, sometimes they gravitate toward religion which is filling a void, filling the void that uh, uh, Jesus Christ should be filling, but he isn't in their lives. So for want of true spirituality, which comes at a cost, <laughs> they uh, create or find religion, rituals, and things that just uh, take the place of living by faith, as they're supposed to be as a Christian. Those sorts of things appeal naturally. They, they appeal to the natural man, having special days and special foods and special clothes and all of this stuff, which is why so many of the religions of the world have them, because they're, those things are of the spirits of the world. So... Um, you know, if you don't know your God very well, those things will appeal to you too. If you're a young believer, if you're a spiritually immature Christian, those things will appeal to you. Um, they seem like zeal for God. But it's not what God wants. So, it's no good. It's not coming from him. If it's not coming from him, then it is coming from the devil. So the Jewish phenomenon, the preoccupation with, with Judaism, trying to be Jewish, claiming to be Jewish, of this sort or the other, is not coming from God. Insisting upon calling Jesus by a Hebrew name, not coming from God. If you really believe in your heart of hearts that Jesus Christ will be offended if you call him anything other than Yeshua, Meshiach, whatever, <laughs> And by all means, continue. But I'm telling you, he doesn't care. Um, call him. Call him whatever you call him in your native language. Just call him Lord. And mean it. <laughs> That's what he cares about. Um, you know, when you... When you neglect the major things, then all the little things suddenly become a big issue. Hopefully that's some good advice that you'll keep in mind. That when you're not paying attention to the things that you ought, then all the little things become an issue. The little things that don't really matter. And you start becoming obsessed with little things, silly things, rituals, special names, special foods. Special Bibles. <laughs> uh, Messianic Judaism is not of God. If they are truly born again, then they're just Christians like everybody else. 
being proud of your Jewish heritage or of any heritage is carnal. It doesn't have any place in the life of a Christian, being proud of what you look like, who your ancestors were. All of that stuff is earthly. And I know there are a lot of Christians who are like that, but that doesn't mean that it's right. It's not the way God sees things, and it's not from him. So, you know, the Messianic Jews, they're not doing what they're doing for Jesus Christ. They're doing it for themselves. You know, sit, sit, sit down with one of them, if you know one of them, and have a little conversation with them about the Apostle Paul and see what comes out of their hearts. It's not good. Any way that you deviate from the Lord's path to the right or to the left, whether you, you know, diverge into religion or whether you diverge into uh, carnality, worldly entertainment and self-indulgence, you're still serving the sinful nature. You're still serving yourself. It's not improving you spiritually. You can't improve upon what God gave us. He gave us exactly what he wanted, knowing how man is. You can't escape from your sinful nature by any other means. <laughs> and I don't mean you can actually, like, you know, totally escape from it. You won't be able to do that until, you know, you're not in this body anymore. But any way that you deviate from... Christianity, you're going to have trouble. You know, the devil lies on both sides. He plays both sides. And, uh, so dispense with the preoccupation with Judaism. Judaism looks to Christianity, not the other way around. We look back to Judaism as an example of what not to do. And also, um, for the symbolism that's in it, we have the realities of those symbols in Christianity. So Judaism doesn't have anything to offer anybody. And, uh, the people who are obsessed with it are not doing it because of the Lord. They're not benefiting from it spiritually. I'll tell you what it produces. It produces pride. It produces pride. So if you want pride, then by all means, indulge. <laughs> God knew what he was doing. He knows what he's doing in terms of what he gave us and what he didn't give us. He doesn't want us to be like the Jews. He doesn't want us to be like the Muslims. He doesn't want us to be... He wants us to be like himself so um, the only way that we're going to be like him is if we keep his ways and live according to his commands not the law of Moses so um, so besides a lack of of uh, spirituality, I think part of this persuasion has to do with uh, the time that we're getting ready to enter. Um, it could very well have something to do with the Antichrist being, you know, getting ready to be revealed, who will be a Jew. Um, he'll be a Jew and he'll fulfill for the, uh, the Jews, everything that Jesus didn't fulfill in their eyes, even though he did fulfill it, this guy, this Antichrist, is going to fulfill it for them. So uh, he is going to be a Jew, and all the stuff that pertains to the Messiah, he's going to appear to fulfill. And um, they're going to receive him. So, you know, I was thinking about this Jewish phenomenon and um, I could easily, I could see how um, during that time of tribulation, when the Jews are going to be experiencing prosperity under the, the reign of their, their Messiah, this Antichrist, he's going to make them 
prosperous and wealthy and, you know, usher in that time of prosperity and peace that they're, they're looking forward to. Every man under his own fig tree and vine sort of a thing. Just like in the days of Solomon. Christians are going to be getting, <laughs> are going to be getting massacred. <laughs> They're just going to be killed. And so you can see how like this Antichrist could point to what's happening with Christians, which of course is God's will, just as Jesus going to the cross was God's will. Um, uh, and God didn't intervene. He didn't stop that because it was his will. Um, but you can see how the Antichrist could point to these Christians who are being killed. And uh, he's saying something like, oh, come share in the prosperity of God's chosen people. See, see you, now you see that, that we really are the chosen people and you were wrong. God is blessing us. Where is he? Where is, why isn't he coming to your help? Why are you being slaughtered? Where is your God? Where is your God? Come share in the prosperity of God's chosen people. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. <laughs> Could have something to do with it, but I, I just find it very strange that all of a sudden everyone seems to be obsessed with with the Jews and being a Jew and whatever. Um, but that is not coming from the Lord. So the only Jews who are blessed are the Jews who are in Christ. The rest of them are going to fare just like everybody else. They rejected the Messiah unless they receive him. They're going to spend eternity in the lake of fire along with all the other people who weren't Jewish. Regardless of how religious they look. Um, so, avoid unscriptural nonsense. Stick to the New Testament. Obey the Lord. <laughs> Same thing. Again and again and again. Uh, Avoid anything that isn't coming from him. <laughs>